let's start with these two major stories because I think they're 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 linked. Number one, of course, is the New York Times survey that New York Times Siena poll that shows that Donald. If you had the election today, that Donald Trump would win the Electoral College handily, that he's mm-hmm. leading in a whole bunch of swing states. I mean, this is just jam packed with bad news for. Uh, for 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 Joe Biden. At the same time, we had this extraordinary story in in the Washington Post about what a Trump 2.0 presidency would look like, and um, I probably don't need to tell you, Will, but it's worse than almost anyone can imagine. I mean, they're talking about already uh, invoking the Insurrection Act to bring the military in to suppress protests on inauguration oh, yeah. day. They've made a list of the people that they would want to prosecute. They have names. And apparently the one crime that links them all together is they've criticized Donald Trump. But, you know, despite that, and despite the fact that this morning as you and I are speaking in New York, Donald Trump is gonna take the stand to test, what could go wrong there? Take the stand to testify (laughs) under oath in that civil trial that could destroy his business. And so here's a guy who faces 91 felony counts is about to be put out of business because he is a chronic fraudster. Here's somebody who is standing, who will be standing trial for trying to overthrow the government, uh, overthrow the election, um, defrauding the government, violating the Espionage Act, who's facing charges of racketeering, who has been found liable for sexual assault by a federal judge. And I'm sorry, I'm leaving so many things out here, but he is... (laughs) He is the leading candidate, not just for the Republican nomination, but for president. I bring this up because I'm looking for the pony in all of this. <laughs> and so we do this every week, but but I'm really kind of looking for the pony because I'm looking at these this this survey here. And I'm I'm sorry for you know people who are triggered by this sort of thing. Election held today. Biden, um I mean sorry, Trump would win Nevada by 10 points. Looks like 11 to me. Georgia, he would win by six points. Arizona, he would win by five points. Uh, Trump would win Michigan by five points. He would win Pennsylvania by four points. My home state of Wisconsin, Biden leads by two points was sort of something of an outlier. So, Will, uh, let's do some rank punditry here. Um, I'm sure you've been... I, I, I sort of envisioned that you stayed up all night crunching the numbers here. You, know, you had a, a, <laughs> oh, a whiteboard. You know. Yeah. I, I, well, since I have to look for the pony, I have, you know, you have to look through the numbers for that. Uh, by the way, I, I want to say, first of all, I want to bring this out. This is a My Little Pony, which was sent to me Good by props. one of our favorite Bulwark members, uh, Holly Berkeley Fletcher. Thank you, Holly. Um, I'm just showing it to, yes, Holly sent this. Wow. Uh, and so I'm going to try to collect all of them. I think there are six. Okay. Is that right? That, that, that may be a bridge too far. Just, <laughs> just, just. Okay. But I only have two ponies for you here. I mean, maybe we can come up with some more. Look, I think this is a grim poll. So I'm, I'm, I'm Man. reaching here. Yeah. The first thing, Charlie, is what you said at the beginning. If the election were held today. You're right. Fortunately, it's not. It's not being held today. There's a year. What's going to happen in that year? One thing that could happen is that the objective reality that the economy is better than people think it is, even at the household level. And I understand your point that you've made before. Don't tell people they're not feeling what they're feeling. They are feeling it. But yeah. Lived it is true that the, the household, mm. household indicators are better than people express their subjective feelings. So over time, one would hope that the objective situation would it would influence people's subjective views. That's that's one, okay? A second thing that's going on there is, I mean, there will be a lot of advertising between now and then. I mean, Joe Biden has been absent, right? Just absent. He gives speeches, nobody watches. He he talks for two minutes for 30 seconds. He's a he's a tired guy, right? He, he did the last campaign from his basement. He's tried to do a lot of the same thing now. So let's see what Joe Biden has to say. Let's see, Charlie, what other surrogates have to say on behalf of Joe Biden, because again, there's a lot. There's a lot of good stuff to say. Um, the other thing, Charlie, is the New York Times published the grim story on Sunday, right? And then what do they do today? They right. come out with the part where they say, "However, if Trump is convicted, about six percent, I think they said right. in these swing states would switch over and vote that's right for that's Biden, right. right? And that's enough yeah. to swing those states. Now I don't know if that's true, but that's something. That's a point. Yeah, let me let me just read this here. The, the the headline today is Trump indictments have not sunk his campaign, but a conviction might. If the former president is convicted and sentenced, 
as many of his allies expect him to be in the January 6th related trial held next year in Washington, D.C., around 6% of voters across Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, say they would switch their votes to Mr. Biden. That would be enough potentially to decide the election. Okay, right. Genuine pony. No Do question it? about it. No, um, maybe. Um, but but let, okay, let me step back for the, the, the non-pony part. We need to look at the pile. Donald Trump. We know who Donald Trump is. We have lived through Donald Trump. We know what he intends to do. He keeps telling us what he intends to do. He is one of the most deplorable figures in the history of American politics. He is actually on trial for 91 felony charges. You know, almost on a daily basis, he comes up with some absolute piece of complete (laughs) batshit crazy (laughs) lunacy. And yet he is competitive in the race for president today. Okay, I'm not making it a predictive. It's like, what does it say about America that he's even plausibly being considered? What does it say about how truly shitty the campaigns of you know Ron DeSantis and other Republicans are that not one Republican can figure out how to derail a guy who's basically been found guilty of rape, fraud, who's, you know, absconded with documents, who, who uh, was complicit in a coup, you would think that they would find a way to run against him. So there is that moment where you step back and you go, OK, um, are we crazy or is has the, has the whole country lost its mind? So I, I do think that's a a legitimate concern. The second is the real danger here. I mean, we need to get out of denial. Donald Trump can be elected president. Joe Biden can lose this election. This is possible. So I do think, and the danger of a Trump presidency, you know, um, it becomes more apparent every day. It's like, just when you think you can't learn anything more, let me just read you from this Washington Post piece, which I know you've read. In private, Trump has told advisors and friends in recent months that he wants the Justice Department to investigate one-time officials and allies who have become critical of his time in office, including his former chief of staff, John Kelly former Attorney General Bill Barr, as well as Attorney Ty Cobb and former Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman Mark A. Milley, according to people who have talked to him. Okay, so he's come up with a list of people he wants to prosecute. The only thing they've done is to criticize him. Now, it goes on to basically describe that not only does he want to weaponize the uh, you know, the, the justice system, but they're actually, you know, have drawn up plans for, they've actually drawn up plans. Let me see if I can find this here. Um, uh, I'm sorry, that they've drawn up specific plans for using the federal government to punish critics and opponents. And he and his associates are drafting plans to potentially invoke the Insurrection Act on his first day in office to allow him to deploy the military against civil demonstrations. OK, so this Charlie, this has been going on when Donald Trump announced for president in yeah. November, right. a year ago, a year ago, he said that he would send the military yeah. into right. American cities. That insurrection, act, that's been out there. No one, no one has paid any attention to it. Now, maybe they don't care. And I think that's the real alarm yeah. in these polls, right? Yeah. That yeah. people don't actually care. Or maybe it hasn't registered and well, Democrats can yeah. somehow make it register over the next year. Well, I, I'm, I'm afraid, and I don't mean this to be as snarky as it's going to come off, but, you know, it's like 1992 called, Will, and, and, and they want their, <laughs> it's the economy stupid line back, because I'm not sure that the economy is going to change things. There's something different about our politics, something genuinely strange, and um, I'm not sure that anybody fully understands, but can I find some ponies here for you? Go ahead. Go ahead. Because because I, I think they, there's going to be a lot of ads, is frankly, is not going to be doing it here. Um <laughs> And we'll, we'll get to what uh, David Axelrod had to say. And I wrote this in, in Morning Shots. And I am, by the way, you know, I am not a unskew the polls kind of guy. I'm not a kind of guy that, that will dismiss the polls easily because right. I do think that the polls are consistent in saying Joe Biden is in trouble. And I mean, you really have to be in trouble to be losing to Donald Trump. I mean, I, I just want people to take a deep <laughs> breath about how bad things have to be, not not just that you're underwater, you know, in terms of approval rating, but you might lose to Donald Trump. But I do have some questions about this poll. Do you really think that Biden only leads Trump by one point among young voters? I am a little skeptical here. OK, I'm just I mean, young voters may have their own issues, but I'm not sure that Donald Trump, 
is tied among young voters. So what happens if younger voters come back home uh, to Joe Biden? Um, those numbers change. Okay. Do you really think that Hispanic voters are flocking to Donald J. Trump and that they put him within single digits in the polls? A mm -hmm. little skeptical about that too. What happens again if those numbers um, revert to the norm? Um, if we if if Hispanics realize, hey, this guy has actually been running against us and hates us, um, maybe we shouldn't vote for him. Do you really think? Okay, back to this New York Times poll. Mm -hmm. Serious. Do you really think that Donald Trump is going to draw nearly a quarter of the black vote? That Donald Trump is really going to be getting twenty two percent of the black vote? What happens if that drops back into single digits, as it will? Um, what does that do to the numbers? So, I mean, part of this is just like the, these numbers are horrible. There's no question about it. And I'm not trying to be a denialist about it. But I'm also saying that if you're Biden's people, you say, OK, we can get those voters back. We, we're never going to get the MAGA voters. We may have lost this other group of voters here, but there's, there's no way that Donald Trump's getting 22 percent of the black vote. What do you think? Am okay. I being uh, so too optimistic here? I mean, what? I kind of, kind of, yeah. I mean, look, Charlie, it's a fine line between skepticism and denial, right? And I, right. I think you're right. You haven't been an unskew the polls guy. True. No, no. But I worry every time I hear, especially, look, I come, I, I, I've hung up with Democrats and progressives my whole life. And I've heard this a lot. You know, the Charlie, I remember uh, uh, somebody saying in 1984, when Reagan was about to crush Mondale, you know, the polls can be wrong. The polls can be wrong. So this I has know, been going on on the left for a long time. Okay. So I, I believe in taking this stuff seriously because if it ain't exactly like 22% of the black vote and 42% of the Hispanic vote, it, it there, this is at least a signal that it's higher it's than it ought to be. Right. It is. It is a warning. And 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 these polls are a way to puncture one's preconceptions. Right. About, oh, we've got this in the bag. Because, Charlie, I hear people on the left say all the time, look, Donald Trump is a racist. Right. Yeah. So how yeah. could any self-respecting right. Latino, how could any self-respecting right. black American vote for him? And yet some do more than right. you would think. This is a warning. You You, you saw what the reaction was over the last 24 hours, which I thought was rather significant. Um, David Axelrod, who is a Obama era guru, a big democratic uh, player, commentator, um, mm -hmm. put out tweets suggesting that maybe it's time for Joe Biden to take his gold watch and, and leave. Our colleague, Bill Kristol is also saying that it's time for Joe Biden to announce that he's not running for reelection. I have to say that I'm, I am squishy on this issue, okay? Let me explain two things. Number one, because I don't know what the, what the plan B is. I mean, I, I, I think the problem is that you have not made the case that anyone else would be stronger. On the other hand, and right. this is where this is what I wrote about the, this, this morning. We need to be crystal clear about the priorities of 2024. The priority of 2024's main challenge is not reelecting Joe Biden. It is stopping the return of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, is. Biden the best person to do this? How do we do this? This coalition is very, I think, is very fragile. Um, it's very obvious that the, the anti-Trump centrist coalition is under a lot of stress and strain, particularly with Israel Hamas. Um, but I do think that we need to keep the focus on the fact that, um, you know, Biden is in many ways an instrument here to protect liberal constitutional democracy. Mm -hmm. If it turns out that Joe Biden has so many flaws, is so weak, that he is not a reliable bulwark against authoritarianism, then all of the folks, the fanboys and the fluffers out there who are telling us that Joe Biden is the, is the bestest president ever um, are missing the point because the point isn't Biden, it's stopping Trump. So, right, let's discuss this. I... Okay, all right, so I'm gonna half agree and half not even okay. exactly disagree, but raise a question. I wanna agree with you about the fundamental question, which is the test. This is a right. one job election. Last right. one was a one, one job, job election. Right. Right. <clears throat> Keep exactly. Trump out. That's it. Right. So that's the test. And then the question is, who does that best? Uh, I am sympathetic to the argument that our friend JBL and others have made that the all, you can't test, you can't imagine Biden against an, all, an, an imaginary Democrat. You have to imagine him compared Trump to a real Democrat. Yeah, no, no, right. no, no, Biden, right. in terms oh, of their oh, performance okay. relative oh, to Trump. Oh, I see, okay, I'm, right. I'm sorry, okay, right. right. 
So a lot of, it's very easy to say. And in fact, I, I believe this, the Siena, New York Times Siena poll showed the same thing, but it was one of the polls this weekend. Uh, a, an imaginary Republican does better than Donald Trump. But you can't, you, you got to ask an exact yeah. question. And yeah. the same thing with Biden, right? An imaginary alternative. So who is it? Is it Gretchen Whitmer? Is it Jared Polis? Is it some other person, right? Like, yeah. you need to have a, sp- and once you fill in that name, I'm sympathetic to the argument that once you fill in that name, now you face a whole bunch of negatives that you weren't thinking about when you just well, talked right. about, well, it shouldn't be Joe Biden. What do you think of that argument? No, I, I, I see that's what the part I agree with. Um, I mean, we, we've seen you know, how somebody like Ron DeSantis, who is strong on paper, what they actually look like when they're in the, the arena. Um, I think we ought to be skeptical about that. So I don't think that the Democrats have a plan B yet. On the other hand, I do think this sort of angry protectiveness, like we can never talk about Joe Biden's age. Um, Inflation is a complete myth. You people are complete idiots if you don't believe that. Um, Or let's not talk about Hunter Biden's sleaze or or the border or crime, any of those things. Um, You're betting the future of constitutional democracy on the fact that those things won't matter. And here's the reality check. They do matter. Voters are paying attention to them. So I do think there is that this defensiveness that, you know, and again, you can make the case that Joe Biden has had a successful term without saying and therefore is deserves a second term or that he's the best candidate to protect us from Donald Trump. So I I, I, I guess this is where um, I dissent from the. Right. You know, Bi- Biden is better than Obama. Biden is the best president since Harry Truman uh, sort of sort of line here. I because I want to be focused crystally clear on this is not about the affirmation of Bidenism. For me, it's about stopping Trumpism and the illiberal authoritarianism. I mean, right. I am I am I am single mindedly focused on that. If Joe Biden's the guy, fine. But if he's not the guy. Right. Then that that then it is it misses the point completely to go all in on, you know, right. Writing fan I, fiction about him. Yeah. Can I just say I'm really enjoying this conversation because okay. I feel like I'm in a one on one focus group. Now, I don't matter. <laughs> OK, right. I don't matter. I'm yeah. I'm a lib. I'm yeah. I'm live in Maryland. I'm going to yeah, vote yeah, for yeah. Joe Biden. Right. Yeah. Right. But I'm talking to a conservative who lives in Wisconsin. Right. And and. Leaving aside, like to, to win these states, Wisconsin was one of the ones in the Siena poll, obviously. To win these states, people like me are not enough. And the whole game is, can we get, you know, people like you? And, and then there's lots of other people who are, you right. know, swing constituencies. And so it can't be about, it, the, 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 I think the argument that's going to get a lot of folks like you is the negative argument. And so yeah, even no, if I believe in some argument. of the affirmative arguments, I, I, we, we got to make, now, the thing that one of the things that really scares me about the New York Times Siena poll, Charlie, is what is it? What why is it that we say the one job is to defeat Trump? Well, it is to protect American democracy, democracy and the rule of law. And yet in this poll, literally, they asked the question, who is who do you trust more, Trump or Biden on I, protecting democracy? I forget I, exactly the phrasing of the question. And Charlie, so in one state in Wisconsin, Biden's the like a winner by like nine or 10 points Yeah. in every other state. It's one point or two points. Yeah. That's the margin on democracy. Biden against a guy who literally tried to overthrow the government of the United States, literally tried to overturn an election. That is a shocking number. And it makes me worry that no matter what we find about the, say, let's say Trump gets convicted in the January 6th case and he appeals it. Right. And that appeal is right, going which on. Which he will. Right. Right. Correct. And, Right. So we've now had a jury say that he tried to overthrow the election. What if people don't care, Charlie? What if there aren't enough American voters who care about that? And they just say, I think the economy was better under Trump. Yeah, he tried to overthrow the government, but it doesn't really matter. Well, I know this is the nightmare scenario. This is this this is this is why. And I think we need to focus on on all of this. I guess, you know, you're thinking you're talking about uh, Wisconsin and the swing voters. And I won't get too deep into Wisconsin politics, but, you know, there was some uh, discussion like, why, why, are, why is Wisconsin different? Um, um, and, and it is because of these swing voters in places like where I live, the Wow counties, Waukesha, Ozaukee, Washington counties. These are people who voted Republican in the past who are just not going to vote for Donald Trump. But I will tell you that if you walk in 
and you say the first thing is, you know, you need to recognize how absolutely wonderful and awesome Joe Biden is. You need to vote for the Biden Harris ticket. You need to support um, his forgiveness of student loans and you need to embrace the, these various policies here. Um, uh, and, 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 and man, by the way, let me now tell you, um, you know, uh, what what I think you should do. I, the conversation's already over. But if you walk in and you go, let's talk about um, who Donald Trump is, what Donald Trump has has done, what Donald Trump is prepared to do, what it would actually be like. Let's talk about that. So, I mean, it, and so, yes, um, am, am I embracing a certain negative negativity? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> because I, you can persuade swing voters. They do not want to be part of what Trump represents. But if you right. expect Republicans to become Democrats, if you expect Mike Pence to endorse Joe Biden, I mean, you're, you're, you're chasing unicorns. I mean, you may find a pony in the pile, but that's just fan fiction. So right. I, 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 th I think, and we've talked about this before, job number one is to break them free of voting for Donald Trump. If they vote for Joe Biden, that's that's really good because I personally think, and I'm going to vote for Joe Biden because Joe Biden is right now um, the you know the, the the one way of stopping Donald Trump. I think if you write somebody in or you vote for a third party, I think you're wasting your vote. I don't want to do that, but it's a much heavier lift. So a year out, I focus on telling people you need to understand who this guy is, but. If never Trumpers basically declare we're all liberal Democrats, they've taken themselves out. They've taken themselves out of the conversation with the swing voters who are going to decide this election. Right, right. Can I? Sorry. Can I put in a? Yeah. So you talked about negativity there and like yeah. feeling guilty about it. Can I? Put no, in a I don't feel guilty at all. <laughs> no. Oh no, no, no. You, you, you misinterpreted that because there's no guilt at all. <laughs> I just want to put in a plug for negativity, okay? Okay, yeah. Ne ne negativity is is why this country is still here 240 oh, years yeah. later. Yeah. Like we like we the 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 way that the, the the entire our entire constitutional system is set up to negate the worst, right? Yes. We Exactly. A, yeah, yeah. We we don't get the best. We have gridlock, we have, you know, courts getting in the way of legislators, getting in the way of executive and like that's beautiful because it's all designed to prevent one guy from taking over our country or a guy in his mob, right? So back to the one job idea, right? That's, that's fine. If people, anyone out there who is unhappy with Joe Biden for all the reasons you just gave, you know, the inflation, mm -hmm. the economy, border, et cetera, um, for them to, you know, at the end to say, you know, I really don't like him, but we got to stop this guy, Trump. And God, I really hate having to choose between these two. Right. Look, I'm sorry those were your choices, but for you to make your decision on that basis is patriotic. <laughs> it, is, right. it is, you're protecting right. the United States. Right. Say, okay, so um, you have to find that person who says, okay, I disagree here, 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 but I have to do this because the alternative is so much worse. And right. with Trump, it is so much worse. And and I do think that, um, but you know, what's fascinating to me is all of, and, and I'm sorry, we've done this before, but you make a list of all the people that work with Donald Trump, you know, prominent conservative Republicans, how they've spoken out against Donald Trump. And you would think that those voices from the inside would have more of an effect they've had.